Dr. Frieden, I'm going to start off hard here. This, this week, the uh, Presidential Council of Science Advisors issued a report on swine flu, H1N1 flu. It gave a pretty surprising estimate of what the impact on the United States would be. Can you tell us a little bit about um, how the CDC sees the various aspects of that report and whether you think some of, some of the numbers might have been overblown or exaggerated. I think one of the numbers given was as many as 90,000 people could be expected to die from H1N1 flu this flu season. Certainly, everything we've seen in the U.S. and everything we've seen around the world to date suggests that we won't see that kind of number if the virus doesn't change. But the Presidential Commission did a terrific job of over, giving an overview of what are the challenges in addressing H1N1 and what are some of the things that we need to do. Many of those things are underway now. Many of them are difficult. Addressing influenza is hard. Influenza is one of the least predictable of all infectious diseases. And that means that among other things, we need to do lots to get ready. To get ready in terms of our healthcare system, what would we do if we needed more people on, in, on uh, ventilators and intensive care units? How can we plan to surge up? And those plans are underway. What can we do to vaccinate people as quickly as possible when vaccine becomes available? How can we make sure that people who have underlying health conditions like asthma, diabetes, and who might get very sick from flu get rapidly treated if they get sick and flu is circulating? At the same time, making sure that when flu comes this year, we don't overwhelm emergency departments pe with people who aren't very sick and shouldn't be in an emergency department. So the report, I think, unfortunately, the media coverage of it was not nearly as balanced as the report itself. The report was very helpful, thorough, and uh, an overview of the needs. And what's gotten all of the play is one particular scenario that they outlined. And there are various scenarios you can come up with. Our approach is to say, yes, flu is a very serious problem. We're taking very intensive steps to respond to it. And we will work to ensure that as, that as few people get very sick and die as possible. What that number will be, only time will tell. We know that if we work uh, well now, if we prepare to treat people promptly when they become ill, if they have underlying conditions, to vaccinate people promptly when vaccine becomes available, will be much more likely to have as low a number as possible. Dr. Frieden, when vaccine becomes available actually is one of the key questions. It doesn't look like we'll have significant supplies in a start of a campaign until the middle of October. That report actually urged you to get some out the door in September, partly because of all the concern about transmissibility with schools getting started. Is there any effort to actually do that and start some of the priority groups getting vaccinated in September? We wish we had new vaccine technologies that would allow us to turn on a dime and make a new vaccine in a question of weeks or months. Despite over a billion dollars of research, we don't have that yet. It's not possible with today's technologies to do that. What has happened is immediately when the new, vac when the new virus began circulating, the CDC developed a seed strain to help develop a new vaccine. Uh, HHS has been working the um, Health and Human Services, a number of different entities have been working with vaccine manufacturers, companies to rapidly make as much vaccine as can be made. We need to ensure that it's made with full attention to all of the safety guidelines and that's being done. One of the decisions that had to be made was to go ahead with producing the vaccine, go ahead with preparing it to be used. We anticipate that vaccine will be available in mid-October. Um, it would be great if some were available sooner, but realistically, it doesn't look like that will be possible in, in large numbers. At the same time, what we're talking about is potentially tens of millions of doses available in mid-October. Then the next challenge is getting people vaccinated. And that will be something that will have to be done on a state-by-state -state basis, working with doctors, healthcare, other health care providers, pharmacies, um, uh, schools, workplaces, using all of the resources of different communities to get people vaccinated promptly.